Welcome to the Gospel Attic Podcast. I'm Greg Bryan. And I'm Jim Resty. We're gospel addicts because we believe the gospel of Jesus isn't just good news, it's the best news ever. We're addicted to the gospel because it doesn't just start us out in the Christian life, it is the Christian life. Join us as we look at the Bible through the lens of the gospel. Thanks so much for listening. We can shift gears now and switch to Hosea. Hosea is a pretty interesting uh, book of the Bible um, because it's mostly a story. And um, it's a very personal story. Yes. Of the, the agony of an unfaithful mate. That's right. And so I'm, I think we, we uh, I'd love to play that. I won't do it, but I'd love, I'll probably quote from it at the beginning, uh, an old song from 1970 um by led zeppelin so um it's yeah, another it called reference. hey hey what can i do hey, hey, it's what kind can of a I blues do? rock song yeah, um, summarize the song for us well you the song basically you. and there's other secular songs like this about someone who i love a girl and i really love her but she uh, they use a, a british slang metaphor in the song she balls around all the time which is a metaphor for uh, sleeping around and he's breaking his heart the singer you know i've got this girl i love her so much and you know, I've got to look, everyone's, there's a part, everyone in the evening, everyone's at home with the one they love. I walk the town, keep searching all around, looking for my street corner girl. And then the chorus is, I've got a woman, she wants to ball all day. I've got a woman, she won't be true. I've got a woman, stay drunk all the time. I got a little woman, she won't be true. The title's, hey, hey, what can I do? It's just despair over loving someone who's unfaithful. You, it's Jose in a nutshell. It is. when you When you hear that song, do you wonder if people went up to Led Zeppelin at some point or um, one of the band members and said, hey, that song is right it's, from the Bible? It's, it's, no, it's, I, I, my guess is no one ever did that because they had such a I reputation. Don't know. Being evil I don't know. You think somebody maybe. Maybe. Was, you know, Jimmy Page, was he, one of the, was he the guitar player? Jimmy and Page? he was into the occult and all kinds of things. So there are reasons why you could say that would never have been. But like this is a this is an example maybe or like reflection on Joel, God uses these other nations to accomplish His purpose. God could use a non secular non Christian rock band to say this is a message of heartbreak that completely resonates with my message in Hosea because it's like yeah. there's a part of the song at the end where the singer's kind of you know it's bluesy he's screaming out yeah no yeah no yeah no and it's Hosea does that. There's a pattern, Hosea. It's like, I love you, but you're killing me. But I love you, but you're killing me. And yeah, no, yeah, the agony God faces. So anyway, that's I, the song. I, I read Hosea and I thought, that's, hey, hey, what can I do? Yeah, yeah. Well, I think all truth is God's truth, right? And a that's lot right. of a lot of secular songs point us to truth. That's right. And, and are written about truth, whether or not the people are, you know, especially ex especially the the songs that are really impactful and emotional and um the the best love songs probably point point us to god's love yeah well, i think because the, the, everything we're doing as human beings on this earth is reflection of the, the one true story the greater story right so we're like the even if you're not a believer they're distant echoes of the one great love your heart really longs for right and you're missing in your life and so you can't help but reach out to that and it's true in music and film and arts um the, the, so much of it are echoes that uh you point to christ and point to the, the longing for the the what god really had his plan for us so. so we have listeners from all over the world as uh we've talked about some of them may not have ever read the book of hosea so can you just summarize um so we're talking about it yeah but um can you just yeah quick summary quick summary hosea basically um in chapter one, God says to him, as a, he's a prophet, uh, and he says, I want you to go marry a, a wife of harlotry. Um, depends on your translation, but basically, marry, I want you to marry a prostitute. And he does. He marries her, has three children with her. So he has a family, but she goes back to her ways and um, is very, as unfaithful to him as she was you know, uh, when they got married, but then continue, goes back to that. And then in chapter three, she is... Um, it has another lover that owns her and is selling her at auction. And the uh, gut-wrenching climax is in chapter three, where God has Hosea go. He says, 
go again and love a woman who is loved by her husband, but yet, but yet is an adulteress, and has Hosea go buy her back at auction. So the outline of this, I'm going to basically use uh, 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 Tim Keller, because Tim Keller has a great talk on Hosea, and it's th three quick basic points. It says, our relationship, is God is like, our relationship with God is like a marriage. Our relationship with God is like a bad marriage. And then how God healed his marriage and what it cost him, which is, huh. it sounds like a sermon because it is. It's a Tim Keller sermon, so it's really, yeah. really really great. And then, then he goes into some detail and then, you know, God is saying, look, your relationship with me is not just like a relationship with a king or a ruler or a father. They're all great metaphors for a relationship with me, but you're really not going to understand me until you understand that my, my relationship with you is like a marriage. And there's a number of passages that talk about this in Isaiah and other places where he says, I am like a husband to you. And, um, and very much, you know, of course, when Jesus comes, Jesus says, I'm the bridegroom and you are the bride. That is the kind of relationship you have. And Hosea is meant to be a, a book of empathy. You're supposed to step into God's shoes and, and, and say, I want you, I want you to, I want you to think about what it feels like for me when you're unfaithful to me. So and, how and you, is how is our relationship with God like a marriage? Well, so in a number of ways, Keller, of course points this out, says, you know, marriage, of course, has to be your number one priority in life or your whole life is messed up, right? If you make marriage a, a second, third, fourth priority, you prior to something else, your life goes to be shambles. Uh, marriage is a relationship of intimacy. Your spouse loves you like no one else does. You can hide from lots of other people, you know, but your, your spouse will see these things in you that you're, you, you were trying so cleverly to hide, but uh, they can see it in you and it's it all is revealed. So it's, it's, a, it's a marriage of intimacy. Yeah. And it's a, a relationship, at least just straight from Keller's talk. Their marriage is a relationship of life-changing potency. Your spouse, your spouse has a unique power to define, heal, and affirm you. So you everyone else can say, oh, you know, uh uh, uh Greg, you are you're great, you're fantastic, you're incredible. And your wife says, eh. It just shatters all that, right? <laughs> and uh the other way around, too. Or the opposite, or the opposite. Yeah, Everyone else can say you're a jerk, um, you're a bad guy, da da da. But if your spouse affirms you, that's right. That's that's that matters a lot more. That's right. That's right. Because they, someone who knows you like no one else knows you, and they can affirm you, and all those other things people say about you can f fade away, good or bad, because they're the one who has that real power to do that. And um, so anyway, there's this this. this Great book of empathy where God says, I want you to step into my shoes and see and feel what it's like. So the feeling, if you're, if you're, if you're, um, you are married and you say, and this is a, our Bible study, by the way, is a men's Bible study. So I'm going to talk about it from a male perspective. Yeah, uh, If you're married and you remember your wedding day and you remember what it was like when you stood there at the altar and your wife first appeared in a traditional Western wedding ceremony, she would appear at the other end of the aisle, walk towards you in her wedding dress. And the joy and the elation you felt seeing her in all her splendor. And it's like, I would just want to, I would sweep her up in my arms. I would give my life for her. And I, all that. So God says, I want you to feel the way I feel, which is so powerful because if you think of God just as like, he's my king and my ruler. And I, you know, um, I have this kind of relationship with him of like, a, I'm his subject. I have to be obedient to him. What you're missing is God saying, I have this aesthetic experience when I see you. I have this unbelievable delight and joy in you, the way a bridegroom would for the bride, right? Yeah. I'm elated when I see you. I'm filled with joy when I see you. You don't understand how much God feels that way. And the lengths that he would go to show his love for us. That's right. You know, and Ties right. in ties right into the, the the powerful gospel message, you yeah. know. But also, you don't know what it's like when you break my heart. Yeah. Yeah, and your conception of sin is far too small. When we you don't think about that very much. No, and um, you're not just breaking his rules; you're breaking his heart. And you yeah. said, "I want you to feel what it's like to be me." If you feel like that joy you have for your your the elation you have for your bride and then watch her be unfaithful with everybody. So and let's talk about the, let's talk about, you know, the, the, 
obviously the second point that our relationship with God is like a bad marriage. So, yeah. and cause you, you're, you're getting into that, like yeah, the, the sinfulness. So what, what do we learn here? Well, in, in the book, I mean, is there's parts that are kind of uh, implied a hint to that because they, uh, they have three children together. And by the time they have the third one, the, the uh, Hosea names the third one, not mine. I mean, so she's been, unfaithful from the day he met her. And by the way, there's a theological controversy because some people will say, well, she was pure as the driven snow when they were married because God, will, but she later became um, unfaithful. And uh, it doesn't say that. In chapter one, it says, go marry a wife of harlotry. Uh, but they say, well, but God would never have commanded Hosea to actually do something like that. So there, so you, you say, I know it says that, but it doesn't mean that. It must, I reinterpret it to say she was pure when they got married, but later fell into sin. 